There are new results out today about the world's first experimental COVID-19 vaccine to be tested in humans. It's developed by the biotech company Moderna. The clinical trial was launched in Seattle back in March with help from Kaiser Permanente's Washington Health Research Institute. Como's Suzanne Fawn tells us about some promising results. This is very exciting. Everyone should be encouraged. Researchers say it's a big step in the right direction. The experimental COVID-19 vaccine by Moderna produced antibodies in all patients tested in an initial safety trial, according to new data published in the New England Journal of Medicine today. There are no serious safety concerns and individuals do mount, uh, do produce antibodies that are capable of neutralizing the virus. Researchers say that's important for building immunity, and it's a sign that the vaccine may provide some protection against COVID-19. During phase one of the world's first COVID-19 vaccine trial launched at Kaiser Permanente Washington Research, 45 young and healthy volunteers were injected with two doses of the experimental vaccine a month apart. Last week, Como News talked to the first two volunteers in the world to get the vaccine. Jennifer Haller, a tech startup operations manager, and Neil Browning, a Microsoft network engineer. They both got low doses and had few symptoms. I feel fine, completely normal. I had no side effects whatsoever the entire time. Today, we heard from Ian Hayden, who works at University of Washington and does science communications. He's a phase one vaccine volunteer who received a high dose injection of Moderna's vaccine. After the second injection, though, for about 24 hours, I developed, I guess, flu-like symptoms, uh, fever, headache, nausea, that only lasted about a day. Moderna says the levels of neutralizing antibodies in patients in the high-dose group were four times higher than those COVID-19 patients who have recovered. Yeah, I'm doing well, and I think these are, these are exciting results, um, but importantly, there are more vaccine phases left to do, and so if people in the Seattle area and beyond want to help out, they too should enroll in one of these clinical trials. In Seattle, Suzanne Fon, Como News. The shooting in Bothell was one of three shootings within a six-hour window. A total of seven people were hurt in separate shootings in Renton and also Kent. Como's Jonathan Cho is live in Kent. Jonathan, that's a lot of violent crime in one short span of time, isn't it? Eric, it certainly is. And even though police say none of the shootings are related, some veteran law enforcement officers along with community leaders are still trying to make sense of what happened and are hoping this doesn't become a trend. We heard about like five, six shots. It comes up and it's so loud. Police in Kent are still looking for the shooting suspects accused of leaving six people injured near a metro bus stop on Pacific Highway. There's really no question that it is gang related. While investigators are not confirming that and only saying it was targeted, Pastor Lawrence Bowles is already preparing for potential retaliation. I saw a couple of familiar faces. In Renton, police say a teenager is recovering after being shot during a fight inside a Target store. The shooter is still on the run. I saw saw somebody shoot about five bullets at him. And Bothell City Manager Jennifer Phillips says they're mourning the loss of Officer Jonathan Shoup. This is the first police officer to die in the line of duty. While none of these shootings are related, Jim uh, Fudo with Crime Stopper says he can't recall this much gun violence happening in the area during such a short amount of time. I have to think back. Fudo hopes this does not become a trend, but says crime usually spikes during the summer months. Especially with some of these gun crimes where people are afraid to talk uh, uh, to the police. So far this year, King County is up to nearly 200 shootings. Most of that firearm violence comes from eight jurisdictions, including Seattle, Kent, and Renton. And in many cases, there are still no arrests. It's Pacific Highway. Pastor Bull says his church needs to get back to outreach prevention before another shooting happens again. We can still go out into the communities and connect with these young people and let them know that we still care. Look at the growing memorial for Bothell police officer Jonathan Shoup, who was shot and killed in the line of duty. Flowers and balloons, cards surrounding this police SUV outside Bothell City Hall tonight. And tonight, the community gathering for a vigil to remember Officer Shoup, who was killed around this time last night during a traffic stop. Another officer survived. We are learning more about the man who died serving his community. Como's Joel Moreno joins us with the loss that has left this city aching. Joel? Uh, this is really something to behold, Molly and Preston. And just as all the balloons and uh, other tributes out here encircle this patrol car, so too has the community wrapped itself around this man and this department. And amid all the grief are some frightening new details about how Officer Shoup was killed. 
Candles, messages, and mementos stretch across the plaza in front of Bothell City Hall, where the community came to mourn the death of Officer Jonathan Shoup. It was really, really touching. He was always a really good guy. Greg Opal says he and Shoup would often talk, sometimes about his dog Lucy. He'd see him at the park, and he'd pull over and come out and say hi to Lucy. Just love the dog, and, and we just chat. People filled the plaza throughout the day, and parents brought their children as they paid their respects. We tend to come together pretty pretty well when tough times come, so thought I'd bring them down and support the police down here. Investigators say Shoup and his partner were chasing a driver who took off from a traffic stop. The driver got out after hitting a man on the road, then walked toward the patrol car and started firing a gun into the windshield. Shoup was killed at the scene. The other officer wounded. Their work is just so valuable and so cherished, and we're so thankful for their willingness to give up their life to protect ours. Shoup had also served in the Coast Guard and for a time worked in the tech industry. He just came from Amazon to the police department about a year ago. Shoup also had a fiancé as well as his mom and two brothers. We really appreciate the police in Bothell for sure. Local psychologists are tracking a spike in mental health disorders in children, and they say it's due to the stresses of living in this era of COVID-19. One expert tells us many of these kids are experiencing anxiety and depression for the first time. Como's Abby Oconee breaks down this disturbing new trend for us. Abby? Hi there, you guys. So a psychologist I talked to says that this has been an incredibly difficult time for families overall and that children are internalizing anxieties and fears related to COVID-19, current restrictions, and this era of social distancing. She expects these mental health disorders to get even worse in the months ahead. Yeah, it's been a challenge for sure. It's been a challenge. Alicia Galvez is concerned for her children's mental health with coronavirus completely disrupting their everyday life and normal routines. It's definitely a thing that we've talked about. One of the ways that we've tried to mitigate that is that um, we've incorporated some yoga into our life. Some of her kids tell me it's been hard isolating from friends. I barely get to see them because it's summer and COVID. Erica Las Marias has four kids and understands that children are also impacted by their parents' anxieties. Parents, if they're feeling stressed, then kids can pick up on it, and so that anxiety can start to increase. Local psychologist Dr. Haley Quinn says a lack of structure and social interaction is contributing to mental disorders among children, and in younger kids, this manifests in tantrums and becoming aggressive. So younger kids are going to have more of those acting out behaviors, whereas older kids are able to verbalize feeling worried or upset. Dr. Quinn says anxiety and depression may even increase for the upcoming school year. The longer it goes on, the more severe the impacts of long-term outcomes. Dr. Quinn recommends creating structure at home, spending quality time with your children, and trying to find ways to invest in activities they're passionate about, even if it means doing YouTube tutorials of a new hobby. I'm working with parents on trying to figure out what is a skill or interest your kid has that you can do in your own home or in your neighborhood.